Hey Bye guys. guys! Today we're going to do a video about our favorite items that we have to have in our kitchen here in the UK. A lot of this list is very quintessentially British, which has been nice to see my wife become acclimatized, maybe. I'm becoming a little more British, I do have to admit. Very good. And as an American girl, a lot of these items are things that I had no idea about before living here or moving here, or I didn't have an appreciation for until I moved here. And now I. I have to say, these things that we're about to show you are things that we have to have in the kitchen. They're those items that when we run out of, we have to go to the store and replenish. Like, they're always in our kitchen. So get ready for the 12 items that we have to have in our kitchen here in the UK. First up is Branston Pickle. Let me give you a closer look. Now, if you take a look at this jar for the first time, your reaction may be similar to what mine was, which is, ooh, what is that? And, and I take great offense to this, because I've grown up on this. Branston pickle has been a staple in my life, whether it be cheese and Branston pickle sandwiches, Branston pickle with sausages, Branston pickle ice cream. It's a uh, pickled, oh, what is it? Pickled vegetables, celery, cauliflower, onion, carrot, uh, rutabaga. I'm Japanese American, so I love pickled things, and I'm I'm down for pi pickled whatever. But the, I think it was just like in the brown sauce, in the brown malt vinegar sauce that really put me off. However, the minute I put this on a sausage, I think we're having fingers and mash. I fell in love. It's delicious. It's got crunch. It's got the, the pickly taste. It's got zing. It's fantastic. There you go. Cheese and Branston pickle sandwiches are pretty standard. Actually, another item which Branston pickle goes very well with, and we always have to have in our uh, fridge, is the good old pork pie. Do you see the screen? The pork pie. Don't you love that little like Union Jack wrapper? That's so cute. There, there's the lens. It's the pastry on the outside that does it for me, and I think that's what does it for everybody, to be honest. What do you mean? Not the gelatine in the middle. There's this stiff gelatin-like substance that separates it from the pastry, and I suppose that's what keeps the pastry crispy. I avoided the pork pie for the first year we were living here. I just, I don't know, it just didn't appeal to me. Oh. It wasn't because I was against it. But then uh, we were having a picnic one day and I, food. I tore into one of these and I've never looked back. Mm. Oh, that's really good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Mm -hmm. So much pork. <laughs> if we're all on all things pastry, let's go to the good old sausage roll. Maybe, maybe. Chew a little more. We're dealing with pastry items? Mm -mm. <laughs> the good old sausage, sausage roll. Sausage roll. Again, a thing that I've lived on since childhood. And actually, it's a thing that I've discovered every British person eats. It's, um, what would we compare it to? Maybe like our grilled cheese sandwich? I don't know. Would you say that's a fair comparison? Maybe not. Okay. Even in Hong Kong, which has a very, still a very British influence, whenever Stella School was having a party and they gave us assignments for food, we would get sausage roll assignments. Like every party they had to have sausage rolls, which I thought was so odd back then. But now I get it because it's it's an easy food, it's delicious, it's all wrapped up in a pastry, so it's like a good finger food. And they're and these are nice warmed up, cold. Oh they're good warmed up. Four days old, yeah. anytime. Yeah. A bit of ketchup. And mayonnaise. Exactly. And, and Branston pickle. <laughs> really bad pork sandwich. Some are better than others, and we've had others that are better than this one, so mental note, don't buy these from that or the mm. Tesco's. Sorry, Tesco's Tesco. Might be, Tesco's might be a major sponsor. Sorry, Tesco. Let's, let's not diss the Tesco's. Mm. Okay. Next up, just like households in the US, a lot of British households have crisps. For the kids especially, if you have children in the house, you're likely to have crisps, unless you're very healthy. Crisps, know that, crisps. And I'm saying crisps business. because that's what they're referred to as here in the UK, but of course we know them in America as chips. And if you have kids, you probably have chips or crisps, unless you're healthy and you don't allow your kids to eat junk food, which is definitely not us. 
So we have crisps. Cheese and onions, big flavor. I like the ready salted. Something that is very unique to the UK. Prawn cocktail. Yes. Doesn't that sound appetizing? For me, um, growing up with Asian foods, I didn't think this was, I mean, I thought it was surprising that this was such a popular you flavor. You prefer that to be cufflefish. In the UK, I love I, but this is so up my alley because a lot of Asian food is like fish flavored or seafood flavored. So of course I found this, these to be tasty. And I wonder how these would do in the U.S. To be honest, they probably do rather well because they are good. Yeah. And we become the export kings of uh, or the import kings of uh, prawn cocktail crisps. Take a look at that. We are not lying. Prawn cocktail. so yummy to me is that they have a tangy flavor, sort of like barbecue chips, but oh, it's more like cocktail sauce. That's what it tastes like, is, is like cocktail sauce. They're not fishy at all, so everything I said about seafood flavor, forget it. Oh, I'm so thirsty. Oh, really? Yes. What do you reckon? A I... nice glass of cordial? Yes. Cordial, please. Now we've talked about this before in past videos, but this is cordial. So it's very concentrated fruit juice. Juice? That you mix with water and it, it's very popular with kids slash and big kids. us. It's I don't know, it's just kind of a way to spice up your water. It's sort of it's like It's easy. Not like Kool-Aid, which just locks your teeth in five seconds. Um yeah, this is much better than Kool-Aid, I have to say. Kool-Aid it has that powder that never really disintegrates and it, it, it dyes your mouth. And now that I know cordial exists and the kids love it. Cheers. Oh, he made that a little sweet for me. That's the other, it just doesn't feel as... Um, he just said you can never be too sweet. This is kind of the brand that dominates in Cordial. Robinson's. Robinson's. It's been around for a very long time. This Sponsors is... of Wimbledon. Orange flavor. This is kind of like the OG flavor, right? No, I, no? Think, I think no, orange is... Okay, I'm check. sorry. I, well, who am I to say? I yeah. don't know British. Okay, I see something that I have to talk about right away. Do you want it in your face? Money. I want to put it in my face. The Mr. Kipling Cherry Bakewell Tarts. Seriously, I had a problem. Last year, I ate a few Cherry Bakewell Tarts every night for, what, like three weeks straight? Mm. I could not shake the craving. They are so good. So if you like almond flavored things, this, this would be right up your alley. Do you remember the Silly Symphony cartoons where they had that one cartoon about the candy parade? I don't know any cartoon. They always have these little cakes or like pies with the little cherry on top. This is that, but in real form. I also learned that Bakewell is an actual place in England. So as charming as Bakewell sounds just because it's like baked well, I don't know. It's a place in, in England or did they name the place after the bake the uh, famous for its baking. What came first, the name? Of the no, the town? baking came first. Oh, okay. I was really blown away at the coincidence. <laughs> I was like, that place was born to have a bakery. <laughs> it's called Bakewell. <laughs> Henley on Thames. My God, it's next to Thames. <laughs> This is what the close-up of a Bakewell tart looks like. You see this flaky pie crust, and this is like a thick sort of icing and a maraschino cherry. Mmm. Big as my so, head. So a little bit of sponge in the middle with some jam and an overall taste of almond. It's so nice. This is a very famous British food item. You go for it. Quite an acquired taste. That of the Marmite, which just basically looks like a jar of tar. And some may think it tastes like tar, but it's um, a yeast extract. Mm. Mm. Am I selling it yeah. to you? And it's a spread that you will tend to put on toast or bread. It's eaten all times of day, breakfast, tea time, a quick snack. Uh, I grew up eating this, particularly at, uh, at school. Whenever in between lessons you'd make yourself a quick piece of toast, put lots of butter and then Marmite on. It's quite strong and it's yummy, but as I said, quite an acquired taste. I still have yet to acquire it. I've tried a few times. That is an essential item in our kitchen only for Peter. That's a tough one. Mm. You can see it's a brown gooey paste kind of spread. You spread over toast or bread and it's delicious. 
It's very salty, it tastes very yeasty. One thing I do really appreciate here in the UK because they have such a large selection of it is uh, the preserves. The preserve scene here in the UK is strong. Especially because now we live in the country, you can get your hands on some amazing, like delicious local stuff like this I got from our local grocer. It's blackcurrant blighty. It's not loaded with sugar, so you can actually taste the fruit. And look at that packaging. Can you please look at that packaging? Look, look at that packaging. Peter goes for the good old M&S raspberry. And then of course you can get lots of different marmalades. I mean, this even has Paddington beer. How there we you, go. How can you resist buying Why do you think he came to the UK? To get decent marmalade. Oh, another food item that I'm reminded of with the marmalade that we should have included, but we haven't. We don't have it, but I'll just make mention of it. Crumpets. I've become a huge fan of crumpets. Oh, I forgot about the crumpets. But one of my favorite nice, things nice, is a toasted crumpet butter and orange marmalade on it. it. It really is such a nice breakfast. Crumpets are... And you know what I used to think? A crumpet was like an English muffin. It's not quite. It's floppier. It's floppier. It's floppier. I think a, a nice segue from a <laughs> bit, of, bit of orange marmalade to some mango chutney. Mm. Why mango chutney? Because we like a curry. There are such good curry houses, Indian restaurants around. It's nice to go and eat at a curry house, but equally so, it's nice to, Take have, out. to have a curry at home, which is a regular thing on the weekend. To have Indian food here is so popular that you would say a, a nice curry is standard British food. Well, yeah. yes. Britain's national dish is meant to be a, uh, a bit delicious. One thing I have to mention is they'll say things like, I'm going for an Indian going for a Turkish or going for a... No, I'm going for a Kaza. Okay. Curry, Kaza. Yeah, for I'm going for a Japanese. You did go for a Japanese. I did. Uh, oh, something very essential, especially in the evening time. And especially if you have kids. But I can't say exclusively in the evening time, sadly. It gets earlier and earlier, depending on how your kids are. Lockdown makes it earlier, yeah. Gym. Because I would have to say, and I'm sure you will correct me if I'm wrong, but the national British drink would be a gin and tonic. Yes, yeah? indeed. Yeah, yeah G&T. I think every British person that drinks alcohol has one G, at least one G&T a week. A few hours have passed and we had to go get the kids from school. What do you think of the sausage roll? So every weekend we try to do a roast on Sunday of some sort, whether it be chicken, beef, or pork, nut, nut roast. With that roast, we always have to have roast potatoes. That is a absolute must. I had no idea the secret to the crispy, just like perfectly golden brown roast, Goodness. roast potatoes. I mean, my mom, don't get me wrong, my mom makes amazing roast potatoes. Oh, but she oh. does it in a different way, but the most simplistic way oh, that you oh. potatoes golden brown and crispy is the goose fat oh yes oh my gosh when you're doing your roast potatoes obviously you parboil them give them a bit of a shake around make them a bit more fluffy and then just before you put them on the pan you heat up a bit of goose fat in the pan and then you put the potatoes on put them in for a good you didn't hour. know you were you were going to watch it cooking did you? no you didn't would you like me doing the Nigella Lawson style or uh, who's the one who likes to have loads and loads of fat and oil and lard the racist one Everyone has their own technique for eating sausage rolls. <laughs> so he eats the inside and then leaves a little pile of pastry like, at the end. He eats some of the pastry, but he doesn't like all of the pastry. But mom, I want to have one of those. The cherry baking I'm going to throw up after I'm going to eat that candy. <laughs> that is a healthy pour. Is it 5 p.m.? I can't be sure. I'm not going to. Somewhere look. in the world. Well, it's no, dark. Six, six, six. It's dark, so that counts as well. All right, well, we hope you like this video. I have to say thank you, Great Britain, for all these delicious food products that we now cannot live without. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> we hope you liked our list. If you did, please uh, do like this video, subscribe. If you have any questions with regard to what we listed, please let us know. And thank you again for watching. Cheers. Cheers.